She's just an innocent bystander. So what's new? Tell him I won't do it. It has to be done by next Thursday, Nick. And make sure it happens in Boston where he lives. I'll see you in London on Saturday. We'll have a pint to celebrate. The white zone. on those foreign bonds you bought, and as it turns out, you haven't made $43 million. You've lost it. I know. You know? Of course I know. I'm the head of the bond department, aren't I? I talked to you from Boston. Mr. Toomey, you can't go to Boston. All these transactions were personally authorized by you. The board of directors will crucify you. I know. That's why I have to go. And I suggest you just relax, because everything's going to be fine. In fact, it's going to be wonderful. There's something strange inside that man's head. Later, Dinah. Now that I've given you a lift to the airport, you want to tell me why you're going to Boston? Yeah, Doris, I'm not going to tell you, and you know Yes, that. but this is just so unlike you. Flying off to some strange city for no reason, not even telling your best friend why. AP flight 29 to Boston. Oh, gosh, that's my flight. I gotta go. Bye. This is to announce the boarding of the oh, oh, I'm sorry. to Boston, departing from gate 51. Um. Bye. <laughs> oh, damn, these cages, they don't tell us anything. That pressure leak could have been anywhere. Don't worry about it. It's the engineer's problem now. How can I not worry about it? You know what a pressure blowout can do. We were all damn near human pate. Oh, man. Maybe I've been doing this for too long. Captain Engel? Yeah, but I don't know what to tell you. We couldn't find that pressure leak anywhere. This isn't about the leak, Captain. Could I talk to you outside, please? Why? What's wrong? Outside, please. You want to tell me what's going on? It's about your wife. My wife? Oh. You mean my ex-wife? We're divorced. Why? What about her? There's been an accident. Uh, perhaps you better come up to my office. What about Annie? How badly has she been hurt? Is she dead? Yes. I'm afraid she is. There was a fire in her apartment. Are you all right, Captain? Yeah. Just a shock, that's all. There's a red eye leaving for Boston right now. You can deadhead back on it if you want. Yeah, I guess I'm better. Ladies and gentlemen, American Pride Flight 29 to Boston is now boarding passengers in all rows. Please. Looks like have a full your flight. Ready. Yeah, I guess. What's the weather like? Clouds at 20,000 feet from the Great Plains all the way to Boston. Oh, and we've had uh, sightings of the Aurora Borealis of the Mojave Desert. Northern Lights? Over California this time of year? Who knows? The weather's been really freaky this year. I asked for a window seat, and that's what I'd like. See right there? Yes, of course, sir. This is where your sir. seat is. I want a window seat. Why don't you talk no, to no, the No, 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 no. Why don't you talk to the ticketing agent? I only want to talk to you. I don't want to be her problem. I want to be There's one on every problem. flight, isn't there? Always. Well, I guess this is it, Captain. Have a nice trip. And my condolences. 
Thank you. Pardon me. Excuse me. Roger, American Pie 29, you're clear for takeoff. Have a good flight from Boston. Our flight tonight will take us over the Rocky Mountains and Denver. Yes, Des Moines and a couple of the St. Louis. Then on into the Boston area. So, folks, relax, enjoy the flight. Thank you for flying American Pride. And Vicky. Could I have a glass of water, please? Aunt Vicky? Aunt Vicky? Somebody speak to me, please. I'm sorry, but my aunt's gone, and I'm blind. Hello? Is anybody here? Anybody? Dear God, please let someone be here. Anyone? Anyone? No. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. What's wrong? Where is everybody? They've gone, they've all gone! What do you mean, where's everybody? They're all right here. What happened? Did we land while I was asleep and let the others off? Where's my aunt? I want my aunt, please, I want my aunt! You're gonna be all right. What's your name? Dinah, I can't find my aunt. I'm blind and I can't see her. I woke up and her seat was empty. Who was screaming? Is the plane in trouble, mister? Where is everybody? What's going on? Are we in Boston already? I want my aunt now! Aunt Vicky! Aunt Vicky! Hey! hey. Aunt Vicky! What the hell is going on here? Will someone shut this brat up? You're not alone. There are other people here. Can you hear them? Yeah, I can hear them, but where's Aunt Vicky? And who's been killed? Killed? Has someone been killed? Have we been hijacked? No one has been killed. I felt her hair. Someone cut off her hair. It's 10. Count on yourself and the uh, bloke asleep in first class. What about the crew? Anybody know about them? Not yet. I was just about to find out. You stay with the girl? Yeah, all right. But what's happening? You gotta come back with some answers. All right, everybody. Mm -hmm. Just calm down. Hello, you guys, open up. Hello. So what do you think happened? Do you think the plane landed and let the other passengers off? I don't know. I was asleep. You're a teacher, aren't you? That's right, sweetie, the fifth grade. How'd you know that? It's in your voice. Miss Lee, my teacher at the blind school, sounds just like you. 
Well, if you'll excuse me, I think I'm going forward to join our friend. I want to know what is going on here, and I want to know right now. Well, oh, am I a bit surprised? You said before that you had felt someone's hair. What did you mean by that? Over there on one of the seats. I felt someone's hair. This, this is a, a wig. It's not a human scalp. Is that what you felt? What do you see? Nothing, just mountains and darkness. Hello? Hello, hello? What's wrong? Huh? Flight crew disappeared with everybody else. Yeah, no, I don't know. They're not answering my calls and the door's locked from the inside. I was afraid of that. Sorry to get your wind up, Nick Hopewell. I am praying, sir, that the pilot's cap I noticed on one of the first class seats belongs to you. It does, Captain Engel. But under the circumstances, you can call me Brian. Well, I'll call you Savior. If we find what I expect to find on the other side of that door. Well, let's try and get it open, shall we? someone disappear and leave their hairpiece behind. It's quite a mystery, don't you think? Excuse me. Come out from back there. Who's back there? Hi. Yeah. I'd like to know exactly what's going on, please. Currently? We're about to break the lock on the cockpit door. It seems our crew have abdicated along with everybody else. But we're in luck all the same. My new acquaintance here just happens to be a pilot. Do you work for American Pride, friend? Yes, I do. But I think what's important right no, now... No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you what's important. Me. No, I'm going to tell you what's important. You know what's important? I have a meeting at Boston's Prudential Center at 9 o'clock this morning. Promptly at 9 o'clock. That's what's important. Now, I booked a seat on this conveyance in good faith, and I have absolutely no intention of being late for that appointment. Wait, 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 wait. Now, I have three questions for you. Number one, who authorized an unscheduled stop for this airliner while I was asleep? Number two, where was that stop made? And number three, why? Why was that done? You ever watch Mr. Spock on Star Trek? What the hell are you talking about? Just if you don't shut your cake hole, you bloody idiot, I'll be happy to demonstrate his Vulcan sleeper hole for you. Don't you talk to me like that. Do you know who I am? Of course I do. You're an obnoxious little twerp who likes to hide his fear behind aggression. No harm in that, but you are in the way. Listen to me. Listen! <laughs> Ah! Whoa, a nose hold. I can break it. Easiest thing in the world, trust me. Ah! I said I could break it. Do you understand? Signify if you understand. Oh! Ah! I haven't got time to discuss your business appointments, therefore I'm going to send you back to the cabin with this gentleman in the striped shirt. Don Gaffney. Mr. Gaffney will be your escort. Once you arrive in the main cabin, 
cabin, you will sit down in your seat, strap your seatbelt firmly around your middle, and keep your mouth shut. Do you understand? Oh, please favor me with a thumbs up if you understand. Jolly girl. Now, I'm going to let go of you and your nose now. And when I do, if you so much as utter a word, a syllable, you will be investigating hitherto unexplored realms of pain. I wouldn't, mister. If the guy means it, you better come on back with me. Oh, bad idea. Come on, then. Hey, come on. Come on. Let's see if we can find something for that nose. Right then, let's uh, get the cockpit door open, shall we? driving the plane. Watches, you can take your pick. There are tons of them back in the main cabin. Oh, there indeed. Watches, jewelry, and glasses. Also purses, but the weirdest thing is there's stuff that we're pretty sure came from inside of people. Like surgical pens, pacemakers. You know, I've been going on roughly the same assumption as our rude friend, the one I used the nose lock on, that the plane had landed somewhere for some reason, and then most of the passengers and crew were somehow offloaded, and then... No, there couldn't have been a takeoff while we were sleeping. Well, you can fly that plane on automatic, but you need a human being to take one up or land it. So where are the passengers and crew, then? I don't know. But I plan on finding out. You want to hand me that paper, please? Well, the altitude is right. 37,000 feet. We're on course. What are you doing? Figuring out our closest major airport. Denver Center, this is American Pride, flight 29. You read me, over. Denver Center, come in, please. This is American Pride, Flight 29. Well, you have a problem. A big problem. What's going on? I'm not getting anything. Anything at all. Mayday, Mayday, this is American Pride, Flight 29, requesting emergency aid. Come in, please. Unicom, this is American Pride, Flight 29. Request the immediate radio contact. Over. Denver, come in. Come in, please. This is AP, Flight 29. You answer me, damn it. Easy, mate. That dog won't bark either. What do they do down there? Have a nuclear war? Look, easy. Tell me what you mean, that the dog won't bark. I mean, Denver Control, that dog. I mean, FAA Emergency, that dog. Unicom, which gives advisories at small airports, that dog, too. This is a medium shortwave, man. People should be jumping all over this like frogs on a hot sidewalk. But I'm not even picking up static. The VOR beacon out of Denver, that's not working either. What does that mean? It means we have no radio. It means we have no Denver navigational beacon. 
And my board here says everything is peachy keen. Which is crap. It's got to be. Hey, kid. Would you run back there? Look out the uh, left side of the plane. Look behind us. Tell me what you see. My equipment says we're less than 50 miles south of Denver right now. There's nothing out there. Nothing at all. Denver's black tower, isn't it? Yeah. Either that or it's gone. All right, people, back to your seats. We need a little peace and quiet. We are being quiet. Now, come on, my young friends. Let's go sit in the back then. Captain has a lot of work to do. What are you doing? Using the military aircraft band. Strategic air command is never off the air. What's going on? The captain and that British fellow are trying to raise an airport on the radio. Um, I suppose that we should introduce ourselves. I'm Bob Jenkins. I'm a mystery writer. I've written more than 40 novels. None as strange as this. Um, my name is Laurel Stevenson, and I'm a school teacher in the San Bernardo Valley. And this is the first vacation I've had in eight years. My name's Dinah Bellman, and I'm on my way to have an eye operation in Boston. Afterwards, I'll be able to see again. Probably be able to see again. The doctors say there's a 70% chance I'll get some vision, and a 40% chance I'll get all of it. Albert Kausner? I'm on my way to the Berkeley School of Music. I play violin. I'm Bethany Sims. I was gonna spend a couple of days with my aunt in Worcester, Mass. Now... And you, sir, what's your name? How about you? What's your name? I'm Don Gaffney. And what do you do? I'm a tool and dye worker for Hughes Aircraft. I'm on my way to Boston to visit my first granddaughter. Okay, if at least we've met. That leaves us with the $64,000 question. Where did everybody go, and why didn't we go with them? Air Force Control, this is American Pride, Flight 29. Do you read me, over? My dog won't bark either. We're all alone up here. Completely. Totally. All alone. You listen to me, my friend. We don't want to panic on our hands, do we? You've got ten people on this airplane, and your job's the same as it ever was, to get them down in one piece. You don't have to tell me what my job is. I'm afraid I just did. You look a damn sight better now. What do you do for a living, Nick? And don't tell me you're an accountant. <laughs> uh, junior attaché, British Embassy, old man. My aunt's hat. Well, that's what it says on my papers. If it said anything else, I suppose it'd be Her Majesty's mechanic. I fix things that need fixing. Right now, that means you. 
Thank you, but I'm fixed. Good enough, then. So what do you intend to do? Can you navigate without these ground beam thingies? Can you avoid other aircraft? I can navigate just fine with the onboard equipment. As for other planes, this thing right over here, that says there are no other planes. Well, we don't have to worry about running into anybody then, do we? So what do we do now? On to Boston? Logan. At dawn. One of the busiest airports in the world with no idea what's going on in the country below us? No way. Now we're heading to Bangor, Maine. And I think it's time to tell the passengers. A few that are left, anyway. Could one of you gentlemen kindly tell me what's happened to all the service personnel? I've had a lovely nap. But where did everybody go? But it doesn't make any sense. Where'd everybody go? I don't know, but perhaps... Ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain speaking. Captain, my butt. Hey, shut up. As you know, we have an extremely odd situation on our hands here. We have no cockpit to ground communication. And about five minutes ago, we should have been able to see the lights of Denver clearly from the airplane. We couldn't. Now, all of that is bad news. The good news is this. The plane is undamaged. We have plenty of fuel. And I am qualified to fly this make and model. And the last thing I want to pass on to you is that our destination will now be Bangor, Maine. What? Our in-flight navigation equipment is in 5x5 five five working order. But I can't say the same for our navigational beams. Under the circumstances, Bangor International Airport will be our safest bet. I have an important business meeting in Boston this morning at 9 o'clock! And I forbid you to fly us into some whistle-stop main airport! Do you hear me? Would you please be quiet? You're scaring the little girl. Scaring the little girl?! Scaring the little girl! Lady! We're diverting to some tin pot airport in the middle of nowhere! I've got better things to think about than scaring the little girl! Why don't you just sit down and shut up or I'm gonna pop you one! I don't think you could do it alone, bud. He won't have to. I'll take a swing at you myself if you don't shut up. I'm real scared now. I'll help them if you don't stop it, mister. I really will. Okay. Okay, fine. You're all against me? That's fine. That's fine. It doesn't have to be this way, mister. Just relax. Take it easy. Anyone here know how to work this little oven up in the galley? I didn't think so. That man was just upset, you know. He's better now. We all look like monsters to him. No. I'm sure we don't. Now what made you say that? I hear things sometimes. People's thoughts. I always have. But just now, for the first time. 
I saw what that man was seeing. It was dark and fuzzy, but I still saw. Sweetie, that's, that's just your imagination, that's all. That's what my aunt used to say, too. But it's not. Why don't you get some sleep? You'll feel a whole lot better. No, I won't. Besides, I was asleep, and now I'm all slept out. See anything? I didn't think so. May I ask you something? Did you happen to hear anything the little girl said earlier? No. Well, she was telling Miss Stevenson that she didn't think she could go to sleep because she had already been asleep. I also had been asleep. What about you, dear boy? Well, what about me what? Were you sleeping? You were, weren't you? Well, yeah. We were all asleep. Everybody. Well, maybe. Nonsense, maybe. I'm a mystery writer. Deduction is my bread and butter. Don't you think if someone had been awake when all those people were eliminated, that that person would have screamed bloody murder and awakened the rest of us? I guess so. Of course. So I deduce that everyone was asleep, including all those people that were subtracted, along with the flight crew, of course, dear boy. Could you call me Albert, please, Mr. Jenkins? That's my name. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, of course. Yes, I'm upset, and when I'm upset, I tend to get a little patronizing. Please, forgive me. It's just that I'm trying to figure this thing out. Well, do you have any ideas? Well, if it were just the plane, I could easily come up with a scenario. What scenario? Oh, uh, well, let's say, for instance, that some shadowy government organization decided to conduct an experiment and we were the test subjects. And the purpose of such an experiment, uh, given the circumstances, would be to document the effect of, of serious emotional stress on a number of ordinary Americans. And the scientist who designed the experiment loads the oxygen system of this plane with an odorless hypnotic gas. Uh, after this is released into the air, everyone falls asleep, with the obvious exception of the pilot, who is breathing uncontaminated air through a mask. Then the captain lands the plane at a secret airstrip in Nevada, let's say, whereupon, with the exception of the nine randomly chosen test subjects, all the sleeping passengers are carefully carried off the plane and placed aboard another identical plane. The captain then gets Flight 29 airborne again and returns it to its original altitude and heading. He activates uh, the autopilot. He uh, disables the radio systems. And then, as the effect of the gas begins to wear off, the captain hears on his intercom the voice of the little blind girl calling for her aunt. And he knows that this will wake the others. The experiment is about to begin. Captain Engel is one of them. Well, in, in this scenario, he is. If Captain Engel is one of the people who did this to us, we're going to have to capture him as soon as we land. You, me, uh, Mr. Gaffney, and perhaps that British fellow. But it, it doesn't hold up, you know. What? The scenario I just gave you, it doesn't hold up. But you just said. What I said was, if it were just this plane, I could give you a scenario. But unfortunately, it's not just this plane. The city of Denver is probably still down there, but all its lights were off if it was. And it's not just Denver, I can tell you that. Omaha, Des Moines, St. Louis, there isn't a trace of any of them down there either. Now what has happened has not just happened on this plane. That's where deduction breaks down. St. Louis Center, come in, please. This is American Pride, 29 Heavy. 
Repeat, American Pride, Flight 29 Heavy. Do you read me, over? Nothing anywhere. Not on the ground or in the air. It's like the entire country has suddenly ceased to exist. I suppose you ever read science fiction, do you? Well, I was crazy about it as a kid. You? Yeah, until I was 18 or so. I've been sitting here running all these old stories through my head. You know, time warps, space warps, alien raiding parties. I mean, we really don't know if there's anything left down there, do we? Not with all this cloud cover. No, we don't. No, it might hold all the way to Bangor. With air traffic control out of commission, there's no way of knowing. I suppose you just took us down for a little look, sir. No, too dangerous. With no ATC and no other planes to talk to. You can laugh at me if you want. <laughs> I'm not laughing, matey. I'm far from laughing. Well... Suppose we have slipped into... another dimension. Like in a science fiction story. How do we know what's down there? I mean, this Earth could have the Rockies in upstate New York. Well, we seem to have the sky pretty much to ourselves. Up here, that's true. Down there, who knows? And who knows is a very dicey situation for an airline pilot. So, for now we just go on. Right. And wait. Right again. Well, you're the skipper. That's three in a row. What do you see? The sun's up, but that's about it. What about the ground? Well, I can't see it. It's all clouds down there. Perhaps it's just as well. Maybe. Feeling better? A little. I don't mean to pry, but what? You can ask me what you want. Why did you lie about why you were going to Boston? How did you know I lied? I could hear it in your voice. I can hear lots of things. Maybe because I'm blind. I don't know, but I know you don't lie. Otherwise, I wouldn't have heard the difference. I'm going... No, I was going to meet someone. A man named Darren Crosby. How did you come to know him? Well, that's the embarrassing part, and that's why I lied. I've never actually met him before. We started corresponding through a personal ad in a magazine, and I liked him. I mean, I liked what he wrote and what he looked like in his picture. So I agreed to fly to Boston to meet him. That's strange, isn't it? To fly all the way across the country to see someone you've never even met before. <laughs> yeah. But I just realized it didn't have anything to do with Mr. Crosby. It was really about me. I didn't want to play it safe anymore. I was trying to break out of the confines of my life and have an adventure. <laughs> well, I guess. I got more of an adventure than I bargained for. You're very pretty, Laurel. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Be all right? I think so. 
I hope so. Kind of scared what might be under those clouds. Then I was scared anyway about Boston. My mother all at once decided how it would be a great idea if I went to spend a couple of weeks with my Aunt Shauna. I think the idea was for me to get off the plane and then Shauna pulls a string on me. What string? Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go directly to the nearest rehab and stay there till you've dried out. <sighs> Everything just seems so weird before that this just seems like more of the same. This is really happening, isn't it? I mean, I'm not just imagining it, am I? No. It's real enough, all right. Do you need a rehab, Bethany? I don't know. I guess I might. I used to just think it was party time, you know? All the booze and drugs I could get, but now... I don't know. But getting shipped off this way just makes me feel like a pig in a slaughterhouse shoot. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry too, but I guess this is the wrong time to worry about it, huh? It's time to fish or cut bait. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Captain Engel speaking. We are currently over the Atlantic Ocean, about 30 miles off the main coast. I'll be commencing our initial descent into the Bangor area very soon. I want you all to make sure your seat belts are snug and secure. I'm beginning our descent now. I want you all to be calm. My board up here is green across, and all procedures in the flight deck remain routine. Well, that's very comforting, that is. <laughs> you should have been a politician, mate. Well, I doubt they're feeling very comfortable right now. I know I'm not. 30,000 feet, still the same. I don't mind telling you, Brian. I'm scared stiff. Part of me wants to grab you and make you take us back up again. Well, I wouldn't do any good. We can't stay up here forever. I realize that. But I'm still afraid of what's under these clouds. Or not under them. Well, we'll find out together. I figure we might as well all be together on this one. Stopping that. It's driving me crazy. Well, at least we'll be able to get some chow when we land. You know something, Dinah? What? I really don't want to go down there. I mean, I really don't. Well, if it'll make you feel any better, you're not the only one. I'm scared. I mean, very scared. I think I'm gonna pass out. Turbulence, folks. Most of you have been through this before, so just uh, just remain calm. Oh. 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 What's wrong? Is there something wrong with the plane? Are we gonna crash? No, I, I don't think so, sweetie. I hope not. gonna be all right. Is it really gonna be all right? I hope so. I hope so. God help 
のさ Look,、uh, maybe this wasn't such a good idea, Brian. Maybe we should climb back up again and think about it, eh? Not enough time and not enough fuel. <laughs> Hang on. Go on in. Take us down to 500 feet. If we still haven't broken through the cloud cover, I'll take us back up again. We'll fly down to Portland. Well, maybe you should take us that way now. You know, the weather down there is almost always worse than the weather here. <clears throat> This is starting to look like a bad decision, mate. <gasps> we haven't struck out yet, but we are running out of room, aren't we? I mean, 2,000 feet. Somewhere underneath all this grayness, the ground's rushing up to meet us, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But we still get. Here we go. We're coming through. It's all right. It's all right. We've broken through the ceiling, ladies and gentlemen. In a few minutes, you're going to hear a thump from below. That'll be the landing gear lowering into place. I am continuing our descent into the Bangor area. Wish me luck, Nick. Oh, I do, matey. I do. <clears throat> What do you see, Laurel? We're over land. I, I see a field and a forest and what looks like a pond. It's there, Dinah. It's all there. I'm sorry, Miss, but you're completely wrong. I can see the airport. My God, what a beautiful sight! Well, buckle up, come in. Bangor Tower. This is AP Flight 29. Heavy. I am declaring an emergency. If you have runway traffic, get it out of the way. I am coming in. The runway lights are dead, Brian. No time to worry about that now.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bangor. Yeah! Thank you for that welcome, my friend. My deep appreciation stems from the fact that it appears you're the only one who's going to extend one. And this place is utterly, totally deserted. Oh, it can't be. Unfortunately, I'm afraid it is. So what do we do now, Brian? We get out of the plane. And we see what's what. After you, Squire. It's the pilot that landed us safely. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I assure you, it was a very routine landing. Oh, shucks, ma'am. It weren't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you made it down alive? That's great. Yeah, if I could just have your attention. Now, I know you've all looked out the windows, so you know as much as I do. Not only have the passengers and the crew on this flight disappeared, but it now appears that the people on the ground have disappeared as well. But logic suggests that since we survived, whatever it was, that others must have survived it as well. False logic. I think the best way of dealing with this is just to take things one step at a time. And the first step is exiting the plane. I bought a ticket to Boston, and Boston is where I'd like to go. Shut up. We're going to have to use the emergency slide, so I want to review the procedures with you. Now listen carefully, and then form a single file line behind me. Here we are at last. You know, there's something wrong with the air here, Brian. It's... What do you mean? I don't know. Poisoned? No. At least I don't think so. Just no odor, no smell. What? Is there something wrong? I mean, I'm not sure I really want to know, but if there is... Honey. Honey, there's nothing wrong here. But there is. This place smells wrong. Really badly wrong. We have to investigate. We don't have any choice. You understand that, don't you? Why? Why do we have to? There's no one here. Well, we really won't know that until we check, will we? I know already. Listen. There's nothing to smell and nothing to hear. No birds singing. No motors revving. No nothing. But... But what? Never mind. Well, what now, Captain? You tell me. Us. I suspect this is more your territory than mine. You realize I can turn you in for this, don't you? You realize I can, I can sue this entire airline for $30 million and name you as primary respondent? Well, that's your privilege, Mr. Toomey. Craig Toomey. Mr. Toomey. Mr. Toomey, are you aware of what has happened to us? There are no excuses! Mr. Toomey? Just terrible! Mr. Toomey? Stop wasting time! Mr. Toomey? This is terrible. Just terrible. An A minus and a B. A B, for God's sake! What? You gonna dig ditches for the rest of your life? But Daddy, I... There are no excuses! This. That's a B. That stands for bum. Now, what happens to lazy bums who lie down on the job, Craig? The angle ears get them. Uh, they do more than get them. 
They get them and they eat them. They tear into those lazy little boys with their dry, hungry, chomping teeth. No, Daddy, don't let them get me. They will get you unless you get with the program and stop wasting time. They will eat you alive, alive and screaming. Mr. Toomey. Mr. Toomey? Stop wasting time, Craig. Mr. Toomey, are you listening to me? Of course I'm listening to you, and I know what happened to everybody here, these stupid, lazy people. The Langoliers got them. Pardon me? You know how important my meeting at the Prudential Center in Boston is? Do you understand that the economic fate of nations may hinge on this meeting, a meeting from which I shall be absent? Well, that's all very interesting, but really, right now, I don't have the time. Time! What the hell do you know about time? Ask me about time! Ask me! Time is short, sir! And what do you reckon the best way is inside the terminal, Brian? Well, I guess it would be through the uh, luggage conveyor. All right, then. Now, let's hike on over. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we? Sure. Let's go. All right. Let's go. Mr. Toomey? Let's keep together, please. Why don't we see if we can get something can to see the opening? Yeah. Maybe yeah. there's a restaurant. have to worry so much, Dinah. It's just that the situation is strange, therefore everything seems strange. Including the sound your heels make hitting the concrete? You're right. They sound weak. That's right. Weak. Almost as if they don't have any strength. Coast clear. It's really wrong here. What's your head going through here? Right then, let's try the telephone, shall we?
What, I scare you? <laughs> a little. God, at least that's better. Didn't dare do it on the plane. I thought I might blow something up. Uh, excuse me, but I quit those, oh, ten years ago. Oh, no lectures, please. I've had enough to last me a lifetime. No. No, 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 no. Uh, I was gonna ask if I could have one. <sighs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Albert. What? <coughs> God, you have been away. Here. Now I know why I quit him. <coughs> God. <coughs> Albert. What time's your watch say? Quarter to nine. Yeah, so does mine. But I don't trust it. It feels much later than that to me. You know, it does. It feels like it's almost lunchtime. Isn't that nuts? It's not nuts. It's just jet lag. No, I disagree with you, young lady. We traveled west-east, and any temporal dislocation that west-east travelers feel works in the opposite direction. They feel it's earlier than it really is. I wanted to ask you about that exact thing on the plane. When the captain told us that there must be other people here, you said false logic. But it seems straight enough to me. We were all asleep, and we're here. And if this happened at 407 Bangor time, well, then almost everybody in town must have been asleep. Uh, yes. Yes. So, where are they? It's a washout. They're all dead. No dial tone, no operator, nothing. You can add the sound of no phones ringing to that of no dogs barking, Brian. So what do we do now? Let's go upstairs. That's where the restaurant must be. You know, you got a one-track mind, mister. In the first place, my name is Rudy Warwick, not Mr. Sorry. And second, people think better when their stomachs are full. It's a law of nature. I agree with Mr. Warwick. I think we could all use something to eat. Yeah, why not? Time. I'm starting to feel like Robinson Bloody Crusoe anyway. You know something, don't you? I might, but then I might not. Uh, but I do have a suggestion, young lady. Save your matches. Well, I don't get what you mean. There's got to be a newsstand upstairs with tons of matches and disposable lighters. I uh, just still say, save your matches. Wait a minute. Where's Mr. Toomey? Who cares? Good riddance to bad rubbish. Sorry, mate, I didn't see him go. To me! Craig, to me! Where are you? Something's wrong. There's no echo. What do you mean? <laughs> That's impossible. Hello? Is anybody there? Son, the Langoliers are coming. No, no one is coming. They're coming for you. <sighs> You've been bad. You had an appointment in Boston, and you skipped it. No, it wasn't my fault. I, I, I was kidnapped. There are no excuses! Lying down on the job is lying down on the job. I don't want my job. What? I don't want my job, and I don't want my life. Since I was five years old, you've been, you've been loading on the pressure, seeing if you could make me explode. Well, I am going to explode, Father, and I don't give a damn. You know what I did? I bought $43 million worth of bonds I knew were total garbage. Did what? I burst on a target on my own head. I went out. I went out. Get off of yourself, for God's sake! 
Now, are you ready to get with the program? Why can't you love me and leave me alone? Love is not part of the big picture! Now, are you gonna look at the big picture, or do I have to let them have you? No, they don't even exist. They exist. No. They were here, and they'll be back. They'll be back for you, you lazy sack of dirt. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? You do whatever you have to do, and you get to Boston. Because if you don't, Craigy Wagy, they are gonna chew the eyes right out of your head. Daddy, no, make them go away! Make them go away, please! Just make them go away! Make them go away! Okay? Okay? To me! Craig, to me! Okay, let's go. Wait. What? Shh. There. There, I feel the light. Glass is wrong too. Dinah. Shh. I hear something. There's nothing out there. Dinah, it's your imagination, that's all. Dinah, tell us what you hear. I don't know. It's very faint. I heard it when we got off the airplane. And then I decided it was just my imagination. Now I can hear it even through the glass. It sounds a little like Rice Krispies after you pour in the milk. You hear anything? A bloody thing. Mind you, she is blind. I mean, she's used to making her ears do double duty. I think it's hysteria. Do you hear anything? Not a bloody thing. Mind you, she's blind. She's used to making her ears do double duty. I think it's hysteria. Hmm. Dinah, what are you talking about? I was talking to Nick. And she heard us from over there by the window. You've got great ears, hon. I hear what I hear. And I hear something out there. In that direction. It's awful. A really terrible, scary sound. If you could just tell us what it was from this, it would really help. I don't know. But I know it's closer than it was. We have to get out of here and soon. Because something's coming. There's something making that horrible cereal noise. Dinah, the plane we came in on is almost out of fuel. Then you have to put some more in it! It's coming, don't you understand? It's coming! And if we have a gun by the time he gets here, we're all going to die! hurt anyone. Don't forget, Craigy Wiggy. The Langoliers were here. And they will be back. 
You'd better be gone when they get here, or you know what will happen. Oh, I know what'll happen. They'll eat me. They'll eat me all up. Well, look, this is an airport. There must be other planes, planes with fuel in them. If we find one, can you fly it? Yes. There's just one little problem. Where exactly should we go? Away. Away from that sound. Is it closer now than when you first heard it, Dinah? I don't know. I think it's still far, but I can't be sure. Then I think we should do what Mr. Warwick has suggested. Let's find the restaurant, have a bite to eat, and then we can figure out what's going to happen next. Who elected him leader of the group? We'd better go along. I think he really knows his stuff. What kind of stuff? I don't know exactly, but... Well, I think it's worth finding out. Well, come on. Right. Oh, I'm starving. Let's see what they got. See? I told you I didn't need to save my matches. You were right. But let's try one of these, okay? Sure. But why? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Son of a bee. Looks like we've discovered yet another problem. Can I borrow your book of matches, Bethany? Wait a minute, matey. Exactly what is it you do know? Only that this situation has even wider implications than we thought. What's happening, folks? Be damned if I know, but I don't like it much. Huh. Even that's more than I expected. All right, tell us about it. I know you... <laughs> It's spoiled. Damn, I hate that. Spoiled? No. No, I doubt that. Well, you can tell from the clocks that the power in the cold case must have gone out less than five hours ago. You don't think it's spoiled? You try it. That's not spoiled. It's just tasteless, like chewing paper. But I can understand why you might have thought that it was spoiled. It was spoiled. Try your beer. See how that is. I don't want it anymore. Here, give it to me. I've drunk them warm before. It don't cross my eyes none. Mm. 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 Damn. Flat. Flat and tastes like an old tire. Oh, good. That's good. Flat, that's something we can see. Uh, can you get some more beers and some soft drinks from the cold case over there? You can't dilly-dally any longer, Craigie Wagie. You have to get to Boston, and you have to do it now. up all the useless lazy people and now you're coming back for me but I'll be gone by the time you get here I'm going to Boston so we're all agreed the beer's flat but why well I have an idea but before I say anything else I'd like you all to look around this place very carefully and see if you can tell me What's different about in here than on the plane? The rings, the wallets, the purses, the surgical pins, none of that stuff is here. Correct. 
That's 100% correct. As you say, there's none of that stuff here. But when we woke up, it was on the plane. Why isn't it here? Maybe nobody was here when it happened. No, that's nonsense. An air terminal is like a police station or a fire station. There's people there regardless of the hour. Watch out, I hear someone. <gasps> I don't want to shoot her, but I will if I have to. Now take me to Boston. What's you happening? hear me? What is it? Take me to Boston. You're choking me. What is he doing? Stop What's choking me. Steady on, old mate. Stop moving your ass. You can make me do something what I don't want to do. Now you stop moving your ass. says, Bentley. I don't want to shoot her, but I will if I have to. I think I've been shot. Albert! It's all right, Albert. Albert! Albert! You all right, kid? You all right? How bad in my head? Were you able to stop the bleeding? Oh, I think you'll live, old son. Here, souvenir for you. Found it on the floor. It must have hit you square in the chest and bounced off. I was thinking of the matches. I sort of thought it wouldn't fire at all. That was very brave, Albert, and very risky. God, what if I'd been wrong? You almost were. A little more pop, and Albert here would have had a bullet in his lung. Okay? All right. So here's what we do, Mr. I thought Terrell. it was really brave. Did you pass me that rope? I mean, incredible. It going. wasn't much. I don't want him moving at all. Oh, oh. All right. Hold his hands for me. Say, I didn't kill that guy, did I? I hit him pretty hard. Mm, he's out like a light, but he's still alive. Oh, his pulse is strong and regular. He'll live. He'll just wake up with a bad headache. In the meantime, I think it might be wise to take a few precautions, don't you? Do you have to be so rough? Yes. If you want him safely secured, you do want him safely secured, don't you? All right. Just like one of Father John's Christmas turkeys. <laughs> Neatly trussed. Now, where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? Let me up. Let me up. Let me up right now. Shut up. <laughs> Stop it. Hey, what do you have to do that for? Now, listen to me. You need waking up, fellows and girls, and I haven't got the time to do this gently. Dinah says something's coming towards us, rather nasty, at a rate of knots, and I, for one, believe her. Now, having a knowledge of what it is may not save our lives, but I'm bloody sure that a lack of it's going to put an end to us. And soon! Anybody disagree? Jolly good. Oh, Mr. Jenkins, pray continue. I'm sorry, but uh, I write about these things. I just haven't taken part in them. Until now, that is. I think you're doing great, Mr. Jenkins. And I like listening to you, too. It makes me feel better. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. That's, that's very nice of you to say that, Dinah. I think I found a fallacy in our thinking, and it is this. We all assumed, as we began to grasp the dimensions of this event, that something had happened to the rest of the world but the evidence doesn't bear that assumption out. What has happened has happened to us, and us alone. I'm convinced that the world as we know it is ticking along as it always has, but it's we, the 10 survivors of Flight 29, who are lost. Please tell us what you know, Mr. Jenkins. I can't help but feeling that we're running out of time and fast. Yes, of course. There's no mess in here, but there's a mess on the plane. There's no electricity in here, but there's electricity on the plane. Neither of these are conclusive, of course, but then there's the matches. Bethany had her matches on the plane. They work fine. The matches in here, they just fizzle. The carbonated drinks are flat. Uh, the food is tasteless. The air is odorless and sound fails to reverberate. Then we have a madman, he fires a gun, and the bullet travels mere inches and it has no force. Then, of course, there's the weather. What about it? 
Well, there's a strong wind blowing out there in heavy gusts. And yet there's a low cloud cover that doesn't move at all. It's, it's frozen in place. I think the weather patterns are stopping or they're running down like an old pocket watch, which brings me right to the very hub of the matter. I said not 15 minutes ago that I, I felt it was lunchtime. Well, now I feel it's a lot later than that. I feel it's 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I have a terrible feeling that we're going to see it getting dark outside before our watches tell us it's a quarter to 10 in the morning. Please, Mr. Jenkins, can we get to the point? Well, the point is that what we're dealing with here is time. Not to mention, as Albert has suggested. Let's say that every now and then a hole appears in the stream of time. Not a time warp, but a, 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 a time rip, a rip in the temporal fabric. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. Amen. Mr. Gaffney, what's happening to us, the situation that we're in, this is crazy. Go on. Well, let's say that such a rip in the, in the fabric of time does occur now and then. It would be similar to certain rare weather phenomenon that, that are reported like upside down tornadoes and circular rainbows and daytime starlight. The Aurora Borealis. What? There was an Aurora Borealis over the Mojave Desert when we left LAX. We're supposed to fly right into it. Well, that's it. That's it. An, an Aurora over the desert. That strengthens my point, doesn't it? If we had the bad luck to fly into that, and it was a time rip, well, that means that we're no longer in our own time, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I have to agree with the lady. Time is short. Could we just get to the bottom line, please, Mr. Jenkins? The bottom line, the bottom line is, I believe, that we have hopped an absurdly short distance into the past, say, as little as 15 minutes. And we're discovering the unlovely truth about time travel, that one can't appear in the Texas State School Book Depository on November 22, 1963, and hope to stop the Kennedy assassination. One can't witness the building of the pyramids or the sack of Rome, or investigate the age of the dinosaurs firsthand. No, fellow time travelers, have a look around you. This is the past. It's empty. It's silent. It's a world with all the meaning of a discarded old paint can. Sensory input has disappeared. Electricity has already disappeared. And time itself is winding down in a kind of a spiral that's going faster. But what about us? If this place is winding down and we're caught in it... I suppose we'll wind down with it. Or else wink out of existence like the other passengers on our flight. Mr. Jenkins. The sound I told you about before. I can hear it again. It's getting closer. Much, much closer. I'm going back out to the windows. What about you two? You coming? We can hear it as well as we want to from here. Why don't you stay away from Mr. Toomey? Stay away from Mr. Toomey. What do you make of it, Brian? All I know is it's the only sound in town. No, it's not in town yet. 
But it will be, and soon. Dinah's right. We gotta get out of here, and we gotta get out of here now! Yeah, but where do we go? Atlantic City, Miami Beach, the nearest spa? Captain, you're suggesting that there's no place we can go. I think, I hope, that you're wrong about that. First, I have a question. Is it going to be possible to refuel that plane even though there's no power? Yeah, they have fuel pads on the ground next to the jetway out there. They should be full. But even if we do refuel the plane, then what? Then we take off again. The sound is coming from the east. The time rip was several thousand miles to the west. Can you retrace our original course? Yeah, I can, but why? The time rip might still be there. Don't you see? We might be able to fly right back through it. Yeah, he might have something there, Brian. He just might. Yeah, he might. He might, or he might not. It doesn't really matter, because we're not going anywhere in that plane. Why not? Hey, if we can refuel it, then why... Remember the matches? Uh, the ones from the bowl in the restaurant, the ones that wouldn't light? What? What about them? Well, don't you see, mate? If the matches won't light and the beer's flat... Then jet fuel won't burn. It'll be as used up and as worn out as everything else in this world. I might as well fill up those fuel tanks with molasses. You mean we're stuck here? With that noise coming closer and there's no way out? You mentioned Langoliers earlier, Mr. Toomey. What are those? Dinah, don't talk to him. Oh, don't worry. No one hurt the child. <laughs> no more than I would have hurt that girl. I'm just frightened, that's all. Aren't you? Yes. But I don't take hostages, and I don't try to shoot teenage boys when I'm frightened. <laughs> Touché. <laughs> Mr. Toomey. Well, <coughs> I used to think that they were make believe, but I'm beginning to wonder because I hear it too. The sound. The sound's the Langoliers. Well, I don't know what else it could be. Tell me more about them. Well, my father used to say that the Langoliers were little creatures that lived in closets and sewers and other dark places. Like elves? No! <laughs> no, not like elves. Nothing quite so pleasant, I'm afraid. He said that all they really were was hair and teeth and fast little legs. And oh, those little legs had to be fast so that they could catch up with all the bad little boys no matter how quickly they scampered. Stop it. You're scaring her. No, he's not. I know make-believe when I hear it. Well, I think what Laurel means is that I'm scaring her. Well, my dad said there were, there were thousands of Langoliers. There had to be thousands of them because there are millions of bad little boys and bad little girls scampering all over the world. Oh, my father loved that word, scampering. I think because it implies senseless, directionless, unproductive motion. Because the Langoliers, they run. They have purpose. 
In fact, you could say that the Langoliers are purpose personified. What did the kids do that was so bad the Langoliers had to run after them? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Dinah. Because when my daddy said someone was bad, he meant that that person was lazy. And a lazy person couldn't be part of the big picture. Because in my house, you were either part of the big picture or you were lying down on the job. And if you were lying down on the job and you weren't part of the big picture, then the Langoliers would come and take you out of the picture, take you out of it altogether. He said you'd be lying in bed one night and you'd hear them coming towards you, crunching, jumping, smacking. Stop it. That's enough. I'll bet you were scared of your dad, weren't you, Mr. Toomey? You and the cigar, little miss. I was terrified of him. Is he dead? Y yeah. Was he lying down on the job? Did the Langoliers get him? Yes. Mr. Toomey. What? I'm not the way you see me. I'm not ugly. None of us are. And just how do you know how I see you, little blind miss? You might be surprised. Okay, so what do we do now? I don't know. God, she looks beautiful, doesn't she? Yeah, especially compared to everything else around here. Brian, exactly how much fuel do we have left? Well, when we landed, I had less than 5,000 pounds. To get back to where this happened, I'd need at least 100,000. Whatever's happening seems to be catching. Well, I'm going back to the restaurant. I don't like leaving the ladies alone with that banker fella too long. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. Albert? Albert, what is it? Captain Angle. Captain Angle, come here. I think I have the solution to our problem. They've taken the slide away, and they're putting the stairway by the door. And now they're going up. Are you sure you don't have any idea what they're up to? All I know is that Albert went nuts. He kept saying something about the plane being more there. I didn't get it. He just was really jabbering. I just hope they hurry up. Because poor Mr. Toomey's right. The Langoliers are coming. Sweetie, that's just something his father made up. Maybe once it was make-believe but not anymore. All right, Albert. On with the show. Exhibit A. The book of matches from the restaurant.
Looks different outside. The light's going. That's what's different. How's Mr. Toomey? <laughs> you kidding? He fell asleep. I guess that's it. There's nothing more we can do out here. Now, wait a minute. I smelled something. I smelled sulfur. I did, too. Try another one, Albert. <sighs> you see? You see? <laughs> do, do you see what it means? We brought our own time with us. Uh, that's the past out there and everywhere, I guess, east of the hole that we came through. But the present is still in here, still caught inside this airplane. That's why it looks brighter, more, more alive than anything else here. Bravo, Albert, bravo. Try the beer. <gasps> Smell. My God, it smells like beer. Well, come on, mate, pour it. My doc says the Spence is bad for the old ticker. So the matches work, but the lager doesn't. Well, what does that mean? <sighs> Apparently, it takes a moment for things to catch up. Oh, that's excellent. That's the best beer I ever had in my life. Oh, you're right. It's bloody marvelous. Yeah, try the soda. Gentlemen, the cola is very, very good today. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be watching the nut. Oh, don't worry. He's still out. Damn, that sound is creepy. It's like a bunch of coked up termites in a balsa wood glider. I think we ought to check on Mr. Toomey. I'm worried about him. Yeah, but if he's unconscious, there's nothing we can do about it. I don't think he is unconscious. I don't think he's even asleep. All right, let's go see. Hey, look, I thought I'd... Oh, my God, where is he? I don't... Be quiet! hiding over there, behind something. How do you know that, little miss? I don't hear a thing. I do. I hear his heart. It's beating very fast and very hard. He's scared to death. I feel so sorry for him. Mis Mr. Toomey, please come out. We don't want to hurt you, Mr. Toomey. Mr. Toomey, please don't be afraid. Dinah? Yeah! Oh, girl. 
Not a little girl. She's the head Langolier. She's calling the other Langoliers with her dead, blind eyes. Little rat. You're a bloody genius, Albert. You know that? You're a bloody genius. Well, it wasn't much. I, I saw what was happening with Bethany's matches and thought... Come! You've got to come! Please. Calm down. He stabbed your head. I think she's dying. Calm down. Who's dying? Dinah. The blade broke off in her chest. Mr. Toomey did it. Bloody hell. Albert, you come with me. Brian, get the engines warmed up and keep her here till I get Dinah aboard. Mr. Jenkins, bottom of the stairs. Keep an eye out for Mr. Toomey. Come on, Albert. You okay? Out of here. Try not to talk. Try not to talk, okay? Hello, Dinah. Don't you worry, love. We're gonna have you right as rain in no time flat. Is it hurt? Yeah. Hurts to breathe. <coughs> it's making you want a coffee. Eh? Yeah. No, I don't know. Well, it's better if you don't. Get that ticklish feeling. You just try to ignore it, okay? Don't you talk anymore. Listen to me. She's got internal bleeding. We don't get this blade out of her right now. Damn quick. She's gonna drown in her own blood. Mr. Warwick, run and get me six tablecloths from that grotty little pub around the corner. Make it fast. What are you doing? Looking for the right surgical instrument. Sight of blood bother you? I can handle it if I have to. Good. You're gonna be my nurse then. Okay. You're gonna be all right, Dinah. I'm gonna fix you up good as new, I promise. You're closer. You really, really have to hurry. <laughs> I know, love. I know. Just sit here in the dark. When the time comes to move, I'll tell you. <laughs> All right, Dad. Whatever you say. Right. We're gonna need a stretcher to take her aboard the plane. Albert, you and Mr. Gaffney are designated stretcher finders. Mr. Gaffney, I think if you look behind that counter, I think you'll find two very sharp knives. Can I use one of these tablecloths? Yeah, why? I'll show you. When I was a kid, we used to play Indiana Jones. I made something like this once, I nearly broke my brother's arm with it. Good enough, but remember, your mission is not to recapture Mr. Toomey. Your mission is to find a stretcher as quick as possible and bring it back here double time, got it? Now, you don't find anything in 10 minutes, I want you back here and we'll carry her aboard. But if there's internal bleeding, we can't move her. We don't have a choice. I've got to get her to the plane somehow. 10 minutes is all I can spare. I know, but if she's bleeding internally, she... Laurel, he's right. <coughs> Come on, son, let's move. Come on. How are you feeling, Dinah? It's bad. I know it does, love. See, you've got a little piece of blade stuck in you, and I've got to pull it out. You know that, don't you? Yep. I'm scared. So am I, Dinah. So am I. <coughs> right, fold those two tablecloths into squares, thick as you can get them, and kneel closer to me. Mr. Warwick, take off your belt. Now then, I'm going to grasp the blade and pull it out. Now, the moment it comes out, you slap one of those bandages on there, and you press. You press hard, do you understand? Oh, yes. Don't you dare. Don't you go weak, sister, on me. Don't you dare. No, no, no press hard. Press hard as you can. Do you understand me? Yes. Press hard. Let's try in there. You think it's locked? 
There's only one way to find out. Hey, get out. Look, a stretcher. Hey, look out, he's in here, he's in here! Ah! You're one of them too, aren't you? A Langolier. You think Toomey got them? Get out now! All right, wrap it around. I want you to keep the pressure on because I'm going downstairs. What? Please be careful. Oh, I will. It's what I do best. You did bloody well. I right, give it Laurel. Don't. Don't you kill him. Why not? That bastard stabbed you, love. All I know is we need him. Understand? We need him. <coughs> Listen to what she says, Nick. Captain Angle? Yeah. Why aren't they back yet? Uh, I can't say. Well, I asked Bob, I mean Mr. Jenkins, if he could see anyone moving around in the terminal, and he said he couldn't. What if they're all dead? No. No, I'm sure they're not. If I make you feel any better, why don't you join him at the bottom of the ladder? Are you scared? Yeah. Yeah, I sure am. <laughs> I sort of feel better. It's hard being scared all by yourself. I'm sure. Any sign of them? Uh, well, it depends on what you call a sign. I just heard something like shouting just before you came out of the plane. I hope Dinah's gonna be all right. But I don't know, I mean, he caught her really bad. Did you see the captain? He's up programming his instruments or something. I hope so. What is 
that noise? My dear, I hope we never have to find out. Albert? You all right, Albert? Where's Mr. Gaffney, Albert? He's in the airport services office. Mr. Toomey was in there hiding behind the door, I guess. He killed Mr. Gaffney because he walked in first. If I'd have walked in first, he would have killed me instead. Ben. I, I killed Mr. Toomey. Because I had to. He came after me, do you see? He found another knife someplace and he came after me. Albert, can you pull yourself together, mate? I don't know. I never killed anybody before. I know. It's a horrible thing. I understand, believe me. But it's got to be gotten over, and you've got to get over it fast. Because that sound is coming closer. You did this with a toaster? He's not dead. He's not. See for yourself. He's out cold, but he's still in the game. Now, let's see if we can find Mr. Gaffney and see if he got lucky. And did you find that stretcher? Huh? The stretcher, Albert. Oh. Uh, yeah, we found it. Good lad. Come on, let's go. Keep it together, Albert. That's all you gotta do. You just keep it together. You'll be fine. Albert. <laughs> Take the stretcher upstairs. I'll be with you in a minute. What are you going to do? I'm gonna go back in the office and see if there's anything else I can use. I don't believe you. Nor do you have to, Albert. Just take the stretcher upstairs, and I shall be with you directly. And don't look back. This is more than you deserve, you bastard. Kill him. We need him. You understand me? We need him. Nick! You coming? Yes. In a minute. Bethany, don't jiggle her. Help me carry her up the stairs. How bad is she? She's unconscious, but still alive. What happened to the others? Gaffney's dead. Toomey might as well be. Now, mind you, keep your end up now. Strap her in. It's bad, isn't it? Bad enough. Will she live until we get back? How the hell do I know? I'm a soldier, not a bloody surgeon. I'm sorry. I'm 
sorry. This time travel stuff really gets on your nerves, doesn't it? You don't have to apologize. I'm going to start the engines. Pull as close as I can get to one of the uh, fuel pads out there. While I'm doing that, the four of you pull the hose truck over. There's one sitting on the other jetway. You got it? Got it. Go to it then, Bethany. Mr. Warwick, go down with them, roll the ladder away from the plane. When I get it repositioned, move it back up to the door. Go ahead. We'll get you home. Oh my God, look, it's coming day again already. How long has it been since it turned dark? Less than 40 minutes. Yeah, well, we can't worry about that now. Craig, Craig to me. <laughs> Let me die. Please, please, just let me die. What's going to happen to Mr. Toomey? I don't know. All I know is when the chips were down, I did what you and Dinah wanted. I left him lying there unconscious on the floor. Would you like to go out to dinner with me? If and when we get back to L.A. Yeah. I'd have that to look forward to. So would I. Maybe if we could see it, we could deal with it. I don't think so. All right, then. All together. Now, Brian, I'm going to use the engines to suck the gas out of the fuel pan. How long is that going to take? I don't know. An hour? Maybe two. Well, you better hurry it up. I don't think we've got two hours. We may not even have one. Craig? Craig? Get up. Oh. You have oh. to get up now. Go away, go away, I, I, I hate you, go away. They've come to you, Craig. All the people you wanted to see. 
They left Boston and they came here. You can still see them. If you're man enough to get up, that is. Man enough? Man enough? Whoever the hell you are, you better be kidding. Come on, Craig. They won't wait forever. The Langoliers will see to that. You have to get up. You have to. Come on, Craig, get up. This way, Craig. They're all waiting for you. I'm sorry, Mr. Toomey. Despite what you did, I'm sorry. But we need you, so please hurry. Hurry. <coughs> what is it, Brian? The engines are getting a taste of the new fuel, and they don't like it. Damn. Well, what can you do about it? Try to keep the other two engines running the pumps and hope. No, I'm shutting down completely. We'll have to wait for the fuel to join our plane's time stream. We may have lucked out, Brian. Yeah, we might. What's happening? Is everything all right? We may just have a shot at this thing. <laughs> you, you brought them to me, didn't you? company directors, all of them. Yes, but you have to hurry before they decide you're not coming and leave. This way, Craig. They're all waiting for you. <coughs> hurry. <coughs> Dinah's talking in her sleep or something. I think she might be delirious. might be slipping away. I think you have to hurry before they decide you're not coming. I think she might be dreaming about that Toomey guy. She said his name before. Yes. I will if you want me to. But hurry. I know it hurts. But you have to hurry. She is delirious, isn't she? No, I don't think so. I think it has something to do with what she told Nick about Mr. Toomey, about how we need him. Just let her be for a minute. She needs to sleep. God, I hope we take off soon. Thank you. Thank you for bringing them to me. <laughs> This is my last chance, you see. This is my last chance to, to get away from my father and, and everything else. Yes, I know. But you have to hurry. Please, please hurry. Okay. 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 Anything you say. falling or something. But there's not enough wind. No, there's not. What's happening? Nothing. Look at that. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here now. Megan, stop! 
Please, make it stop! Time's getting short, Brian. How much longer? Uh, 15 minutes. You can't cut that? You sure you can't cut that? I need 50,000 pounds of fuel in each wing, not a drop less. Otherwise, we crash and burn. just to meet you. <laughs> now hurry to them, Craig! Hurry! Hurry! <sighs> Run to them, Craig. Quick, quick. Run around the plane. Run away from the plane. Run to them now. We're uncoupling. We're getting the hell out of here. Mr. Toby! It's Mr. Toby! What's he doing? Never mind him right now. We're all out of time. your report, Craig. Tell us how much money you made for us. You want to know how much money I made for you? You want to know how much money I made for you? Yeah. I'll tell you how much money I made for you. I didn't make any... No, Craig! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Tell them you lost the money, but it was a mistake, an accident. No! I didn't make any money for you. I didn't make any money for you. I lost money for you. I lost money for you. I lost $43 million, and I did it deliberately. I did it deliberately. I did it deliberately. <laughs> Fool. You stupid fool. No. No. What's he doing? You don't frighten me anymore, Father. The Langoliers don't, don't even exist. You just made them up. Oh. No. Where am I? Okay. All right, let's get the hell out of here.
Come on, move it! No! 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 Good lord, look at that! What is it? They're being drawn to Mr. Toomey. But where Mr. Toomey was? If Toomey hadn't left the terminal, they would have eaten us and the plane too. She knew. Somehow she knew. We know what happens to the day when it becomes yesterday. It waits for them. It waits for them. The timekeepers of eternity. Always following behind. Cleaning up the mess in the most efficient way possible. By eating it. Mr. Toomey knew about them. He said they were the Langoliers. Oh no! Get out of here! 
Strap yourself in and everything will be all right. We're up. You all know what happens now. We go back exactly the way we came in. And we hope that whatever doorway we came through is still there. If it is, we'll try going through. I'm going for it. Do you want to come? No, I'll stay with her. We've still got a dinner date. You haven't forgotten, have you? No, I haven't. And I won't. Neither will I. Hold on, Dana. Please hold on. What happens if the fuel goes bad? You know the answer to that, Bethany. <sighs> yeah, I know. We crashed into story. Would you like to kiss me? Go ahead, then. The later it gets, the later it gets. Faster, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think after a while, the days and nights will be passing as fast as a camera shutter can click. We were all going to Boston for different reasons. What about you, Nick? Dress up. The hour groweth late. But why not? What does a most secret classification mean when you've just seen a bunch of killer cannonballs rolling up the world? Hmm. I'm a special operator in the armed services, Brian. I do a number of odd jobs. 
Some fairly innocuous, some fabulously nasty. There's a man in Boston who's a politician of some note. Now, this man, uh, I'll call him Mr. O'Banion for sake of conversation. He's very rich, Brian. And an enthusiastic supporter of the Irish Republican Army. He's also an idealist of the most dangerous sort. One who's never had to view the carnage at first hand. You were supposed to kill him? Not unless I had to. See, our Mr. O'Banion has a great deal of powerful American friends, and his friends are our friends, and therefore killing Mr. O'Banion would be a great political risk. But he does have a very nice piece of fluff on the side. And she's the one I was supposed to kill. As a warning? Well, that's enough about me. What about you? What are you hiding you'd like to get off your chest? Me? <laughs> no. No, I don't have anything to hide. Well, maybe there's one thing. My ex-wife died in a fire in Boston. That's why I was heading back. Our marriage... Ended badly. We were having a fight about children. I wanted them. She didn't. And I did something that that I never thought I'd do. I always wanted to tell her I was sorry. I guess I waited too long. Well, I shouldn't worry about it too much, Brian. I'm sure she's forgiven you. If you get out of this, if we make it back, you gonna carry through with it? You gonna kill the girl? No. No, no more midnight creeps for Mrs. Hopewell's boy, Nicholas. Now, if we get out of this safely, a prospect I find rather shaky at this moment, I believe I'll retire. And do what? Oh. Could always take up flying. about me, Laurel. I got what I wanted. <coughs> Dinah, you shouldn't talk. I saw. I saw through Mr. Toomey's eyes. At the start, everything looked mean and nasty to him. But it was better at the end. Please, Dinah. Try not to talk anymore, okay? I saw you, Laurel. You are beautiful, especially your eyes. Everything was beautiful, even things that were dead. It was so wonderful, just, you know, see. Breathe, Dinah. Please. 
please try to forgive her. Forgive her. Please. <laughs> through Mr. Toomey's eyes. Everything was beautiful, even the things that were dead. It was so wonderful just to see. I can live with that. We just lost a little girl. <sighs> she never got her operation. No, she didn't. But Laura's okay? Yeah, more or less. You like Laura, don't you? I've got a few mates back home that might find it amusing that I've fallen for a nice girl, but I have. She's got spirit, Brian. Well, you know I wish you both the best of luck. But I think we got to concentrate on getting back. We are just about here now. And that's right where the time rip should be. Now, you mind watching out for it while I fly? Sure. I just wish I knew what the hell I was looking for. Oh, I think you'll know it when you see it. If you see it. What's wrong? I don't know, and that's the problem, dear boy. There's something wrong, something very wrong, but I can't figure out what it is. See something. God Almighty. Yes! We're in business! Ladies and gentlemen, we have found what we were looking for. I'm gonna take us straight through the middle of it, and we'll find out what's on the other side. Stop! Stop! Captain! I'll, I'll take care of this. Stop! Stop! Tell him to turn back! We gotta turn what back! We can't take this! Please calm down! Please calm down! Tell him to turn back! We're all gonna die! Listen to me! We were all asleep! Get it? We were all asleep when we flew through the rip! Bloody hell!
Turn back, Brian. You have to turn back now. Seen better days. Broke my bloody arm. We missed it, didn't we? Yeah, we missed it, but why? Well, we came all this way. We missed it, didn't we? We missed oh, it. Oh, that was close. Great work. Is this the intercom? Yeah, well, what the hell is going on? Listen to me, everyone. We just managed to turn away in time. We were extremely lucky. And I've been extremely stupid. I'll explain. When we first flew through the time rip, everyone on board the plane that was awake disappeared. We're all awake now. Therefore, logic suggests if we tried to fly through the rip again awake, we too would disappear. That's all. That is all? That's bloody all? Well, what are we supposed to do about it? We have to go to sleep. How do we do that? I've never felt less like sleeping in my whole life. I don't know what we do now. But if we're gonna try going through that hole, it has to be soon. The fuel we've got to carry us for an hour, no more. Well, surely there's other airfields. There are, but not big enough to handle an airplane of this size. No, it has to be LAX. And I'll need at least, at least 35 minutes to get there, and that gives us 20 minutes at most to figure this thing out and get through the hole. Now, how do we put everybody to sleep at the same time? Aren't you forgetting the most important thing of all? I mean, even if you figure out a way to put us all out, who's going to land the plane in L.A.? We're out of luck, you know that, don't you? Completely out of luck. There has to be a way out of this. There just has to be. Doesn't there? There's a way out. Damn it, there is. What is it, Brian? I can see you're under something. Pressure, that's what I'm onto, pressure. Of course. Pressure! Would you two mind telling me what you're talking about? I'm talking about dropping the air pressure in here to 7 PSI, half sea level. Do that and boom, we're out like lights. Only how do we answer Laurel's question? How do I wake up after we've come through and land the plane? One of us will have to stay awake to turn the pressure up just before we fly through the rip. So one of us will... One of us will have to die. Draws, draws, or what? Only for that. 
I'll do it. No. Why should you do it? Why shouldn't we draw straws? Why not Bob or Albert or me? Come with me for a minute. Nick, there's not much time left. I know. It's not the things you have to do. I think we could have something, you and me. Do you think I could be right about that? Because if you do, say so. There's no time to dance, absolutely none. Yes, I do. I think that's right. But we don't know for sure. I mean, we can't know. It all comes back to time, doesn't it? Time and sleep and not knowing. But I have to be the one, Laurel. You see, I've tried to keep a reasonable account of myself during my life, and all my books are deeply in the red, and this is my chance to balance them, and I mean to take it. I don't understand what you're... Look, I wish I could tell you everything about myself, but there's no time. Would you do something special for me? If you get out of this, that is. Yes, yes, of course. Nick! Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> listen to me, listen very carefully. I was going to quit it. My mind was made up. Quit what? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you believe me, do you? I don't know what you're talking about, but I believe you mean it. Nick, we're heading towards a rift. Yeah, I'm coming just now, damn it! Listen, my dear old dad lives in the village of Fluting. It's about 20 miles south of London. You ask for him in any shop along the high street, Mr. Hopewell. Some of the older ones still call him the gaffer. You go to him and tell him I was going to quit it. You'll need to be persistent. He tends to turn away and curse loudly when he hears my name. Can you be persistent? Yes. Good. And you repeat what I told you. And you tell him you believe me. Tell him. Tell him that I tried my best to atone for what happened outside the church in Belfast. In Belfast? Right. And if you can't get him to listen, you tell him that he must listen because of the daisies. Because of the time I bought the daisies. Because when you brought him daisies. No, not to him. But it'll do. Can you remember that as well? Yes. But... Uh... Nick! Are we gonna feel like we're, you know, choking? No, 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 you'll feel a little giddy. Just kind of swimming in the head. And then nothing. Right. You never know, I might still be here. Bad pennies do have a way of turning up, don't they, Brian? Anything's possible. You folks all sit down. Nick, up here beside me. Okay. I'll show you what to do and when to do it. One second, please. You had decided to quit. You made up your mind. And if your father won't listen, I'm to remind him of the day you bought the daisies. Is that right? It's letter perfect, my love. That's the one to go on, sure enough. Shall we? Let's do it. I am starting to decrease pressure. Check your seat belts, everyone. I think you better put your belt on. Mask right beside you. Nick. You know what? 
what to do. I oh, don't. No. no fear. Off to sleep. Sweet dreams and all that. Albert, would you hold me, please? Yes. If you'll hold me. to remember, even without the movie and the Freeman Moses. I approach, this is American Pride 29, repeat, 2-9er, 29, heavy. Approach control, I'm declaring an emergency here. Quit it! Just quit it! Sit down. sit down, come on, sit down. We're entering heavy traffic unannounced. There is no heavy traffic down there, look for yourself. We're over LA, all right. But what do you see out the window? I'll tell you. Nothing. Nothing at all. Here, put this in. Put it on. This one right here. Buckle up, buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming in. Oh my god. 
We're out of fuel. Hang on, we're going in hard. As close as I'd ever want to cut it. You should have let us crash. Everything we tried, Dinah, Nick, it's all for nothing. It's just the same here. The same. Time to check on the others. Let's get off the plane. This time we'll use the cockpit exit. Thanks. electricity. I'm not sure what it is, though. Well, it doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard before. Why don't we try the jetway service door? Wait. What? What is it, Bob? What do you see? Well, all I see is a deserted terminal, but what I smell. Jet fuel. Oil. Rubber, salt air, I can smell it. Holy cow. Yeah, but that's not the only thing. Listen. Do you hear that? <laughs> what does it all mean? If everything's back to normal, why didn't we see any lights when we were landing? Where are the people? And then what's that noise? It's getting closer. Let's see if we can get inside the terminal. Wait a minute. I can tell you know something. What is it? I want to go in the terminal and have a look around first.
Come with me quickly, please. There's another door over here. Here, Albert, you open that trunk, quick. Delicious, absolutely delicious. Mm. Good. Now listen, I think it's going to happen real soon, and I don't think we should be in here when it happens, because it might not be safe. Come on, come on, come on with me. What? Get up against the wall. <laughs> I think we're safe here. We're out of the main flow of traffic. What's going to happen? Well, when we flew through the time rip going east, we went back in time into the past about 15 minutes. Do you remember me saying that? I do. It brought us into the future. That's it, isn't it? This time rip brought us into the future. I believe so. Only we haven't returned to a dead world that's moved on without us. We've returned to a world that's waiting to be born. Look at that. I don't know what it is, but it's wonderful. I love it. <laughs> I think that the present is on the verge of catching up to us. <laughs> oh, it's just gone. Okay, hang on, there might be a jerk or something. What she said? Yes. Is that who we are? The new people? <laughs> are we the new people? I don't know. That's what it feels like. <laughs> that was wonderful. My God, that was the most wonderful thing. <laughs> cool. Well, Captain, what, what do you think we should do now? Well, I want to go outside, breathe some fresh air, yes. and look at the sky. Yes, but we should notify the authorities. Oh, we will. We will. The sky first. Maybe get something to eat on the way? Oh, yes, why not? <laughs> Hey, I want to stop. Uh, mine too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's blow this joint. <laughs> Unless any of you want to take the next flight east. Mm. Not now, but soon. And all the way to England. There's a man I need to see there in Fluting. The old people still call him the Gaffer. What are you talking about? Daisies. I'm talking about daisies. Come on. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Well, that's that's for me. The next time I go to Boston, I'm going to take a slow train. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you're going to get over that. People pet me. I know. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah!